What does success look like for you at the end of the day? Um, being happy and just being able to, to live life the way you want to live it. If you can wake up every morning and, and, and do whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. then you're successful. Mm, damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. A-Bite Podcast, episode 20 goddamn six, man. Moving up. Motherfucking to a D-Lush apartment in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> but we got, man, hey, man, I appreciate you, dog. You was on the list. You moved up because nigga canceled last minute, dog. So I appreciate me hitting you up at 1130 like, this nigga gonna say hell no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but, we, <laughs> but we made it happen, bro. Because you was like, what, next on the list and shit? Because I keep a list of when people be okay. asking, come on, if I got, you know, saying guests. I put a little list together. All right, who gonna go first? Who gonna go second? Shit like that. I was like the backup. <laughs> no, he wasn't backup. <laughs> no, you was just you was, you was the guy you... we really wanted to record right here today somewhere. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna like have you come on uh, after the holiday and shit, dog. So I'm like, well, shit. Let me see if he's down right now. Shit, fuck it. No, shit. I appreciate it. Bro. No, you was definitely on the list because I've been peeping you, man, for a minute doing what you're doing and shit, dog. But we got a uh, video director. Producer, beat maker, engineer, filmmaker, rapper. You used to be a rapper and shit, cuz. Yeah. Podcast host, father, and the man behind the camera, man. We got GMT, man. Appreciate What's good? it. Appreciate it. What's going on, man? Everything smooth with you, though? <coughs> yeah, everything love, uh, beautiful, man. Everything good. Uh, I'm blessed. Hell yeah, man. Can't Summer, really complain. Summer about to be over shit. Kids about to go to school. Yeah, they start back Monday, man. I feel like my kids start back earlier than everybody else's. Yeah, man. Yo, 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 they start this Monday or this yeah, past Yeah, this Monday. Monday yeah, right? that's some my kids. Uh, yeah. I know some people start like after Labor Day and shit. Uh -huh. That shit made sense, though, because like, they go to school for three days and they off And then the they off again. Yeah. That's what my brother was saying. I'm like, man, I don't know why they doing that. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Dog, talk about that shit, though, dog, being a father and shit like that. And what changed for you? Becoming a father, you know what I'm saying, before you, man, you know, I, was a dad like, shit. I really do this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got three kids, mm -hmm. um, and I've been, like, a single father since, what, 2018, mm -hmm. you know? You know, so I had my daughter since she was one. Yeah. You know, my seven, my son, he was seven, uh, and then my other son, I think, was four. Yeah. Um, and this is 2018, so they all older now. You know, my son, he about to be in, uh, I think, sixth grade. Yeah. So they all older and everything, but I really, you know, I'm really into, like, Besides my career, like being a father, that's like a big part of my life. You know what sure. I'm saying? Hell yeah. 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 But shit, talk about that. Because you don't really, I mean, if you don't want to talk about it, then you can fuck me. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no, I'm saying like you don't really hear like people saying like being a single father. You hear single mothers all the time. But just just talk about that. Like, is it hard? Like, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, Everyday life and because shit. people don't. First people, they, they treat you, you feel me? Like first when they hear it, it's like, oh, you feel me? That type of <laughs> shit. <laughs> For sure. But then it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? As a man, you really don't get all the programs and all the help and all the shit as you get as like a woman. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. I feel like people, women got... It might be harder for them to do it, you feel me? Because then they got to get out there and make money. It's easier as a man to get out there and make money. But sure. then you be lacking on like the home part. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? But uh, once you got some, like my son, he he 13, so... He can kind of hold it down for me, you know exactly. what I'm saying? He yeah. been he been a lot like a help, help ever since he was like seven. You feel yeah. me? Hell yeah, so. hell yeah. Do it, do it. Make it a little easier on the women though. Like damn, he a single father. Let me go ahead and see what he's doing. You know Surprise! A lot of women don't like kids, bro. You got to find somebody that 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 got kids for real. Yeah, I wouldn't even waste my time with a female that don't got kids, bro. Because what can you bring to me? You feel yeah. me? You and don't then, even know how to take care of kids. Yeah, then it's gonna probably bring some a little. You know, it depends on how mature she is. Uh -huh. If you like, oh, I can't even. You know, saying fuck with you this weekend. I got my kids or some shit, or I'm doing something with my kids. She like, hold on, what the fuck going on with my time? Yeah, you no, know that's how they feel. You feel me? But shit, then when they had kids, the shoe on the other foot. Yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Nah, nigga, going they gonna treat them the same way, like. Hey, shit, um, I can't take you, you feel me? I'm not about to take you, carry all you and your kids, and they gonna feel some type of way about it. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, though. You got three kids. If you meet a, a young lady and she got three kids, you ready for some Brady Bunch type household uh, six kids and shit, though? Like, no, I'm, uh, <coughs> the girl I'm talking to now, okay. she got um, she got two kids. Okay, okay, You know okay. what I'm saying? We really locked in. And, yeah. um, so that that's why I, I like that family mm -hmm. dynamic, you feel me? Like, yeah. I wanted, like, since I was younger, I wanted, like, nine, ten kids myself anyways. Yeah. So, a lot of kids was never really, a, like, a problem with me. So, mm -hmm. if she got kids, you feel me? Yeah, more married yeah, type yeah, shit. Yeah, you we feel good. Me? Yeah, as long as we locked in, we all good. My goal is just to make a big, you feel me, a lot of money, just get a, a lot of land, bro, mm -hmm. and just have my family live on that shit. That's dope. Hell like, yeah. that's really what I want to do. Now, uh, your kids into sports? Yeah, well, they like, they like more video games, bro. It's like this new generation of kids, like... 
they might be good at sports, but they rather play video games, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, because sure. yeah, yeah. my oldest son, man, he probably be a senior in high school. That nigga hurt me, dog. He said he he put the motherfucking basketball down and shit, dog. He, mm. he ain't got to the whole he, he shit. I need to link him up with you. He he all trying to edit and do videos and shit like that, dog. So it hurt me, but it's like, all right, if you gonna follow, <coughs> if you gonna follow this passion, nigga, just you gotta go a hundred. Yeah, you know I feel saying? like that's every dad's dream though to see their son play some sports or something. I try to put my kids in basketball. All that they was decent, but. You could tell their heart wasn't in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I really don't know if they know what they heart in right right now. You know what I'm saying? It took me a long time to figure this shit out. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, my bad. I don't even, you feel me? I don't even really blame them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, dog. And because I, I was going to get to that later on, but I know you found your passion just through like just working every day and you like, this can't be, this can't be life. This can't be it. Like, it got to be more than just going to work every day, working a nine to five and shit. Am I yeah. correct? Yeah, I was at, uh, I was at Chrysler. I, I didn't work a lot of jobs in my life. Like, when I was younger, I was working, but I was trying to be an entrepreneur from, like, early on. You feel me? Yeah. So I was working in, like, a gas station. Yeah. Then I, um, I had came across some money, and I had started, like, a, uh, uh, I was, like, I think 2021. 20, mm -hmm. I started, like, a transportation company for, like, non-emergency. You mm -hmm. feel me? Like, you know, you pick the people up for, like, dialysis, and you Hell take yeah. them to their doctor's appointment. For sure. I had started that. When I was so young in it. You feel me? Like, the the insurance companies, they was trying to play me. Like, they, I had to go through my mom just to get... Cause you had to get like a million dollars insurance on all the vehicles. I had like three vehicles, mm -hmm. but like I was so young. Like when I was go sit in the meetings, they'd look at me like I was a joke. And then I was a young black kid, yeah. so I would have my mom sign for a lot of shit. But it ain't really. You feel me? I feel like they wasn't taking me serious, so I just got out of it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I sold, I sold everything, all the vehicles. Yeah. I just moved on. So then I went, um, I went back to the gas station mm -hmm. for a minute, and then I I landed the job at Chrysler, and I was there. For, Chrysler until I started doing the video shit. Yeah. And that's what really got me kind of like, man, I don't want to do this shit. Yeah. Because. <coughs> was that hard though, Lee Chrysler? Because some niggas, like, they get into Chrysler, it's like life changing for them. Like, oh shit, man, my life is motherfucking impeccable now. Like, like I'm good on, I'm, I'm good on everything. Like, was it was it? easy for me to leave, bro. Yeah. I, <laughs> I ain't like being there no ways. I had, um, I had uh, bought a motorcycle and then like, Four or five months later, I had crashed it. Yeah. Feel me? Fuck my rotator cuff up and everything all on my shoulder. Mm. But they gave me FMLA. That's like the worst thing they ever did, bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I tell you, look, they had us retool. They had us move size to retool. Yeah. From like if it was like three months, bro. I promise you, I think I went over there twice. I FMLA the whole time. <laughs> I came back. They was like, well, why was you off this whole time? Yeah. They like, then that they was out for my head after that. They start writing me up for a little petty shit. Yeah, yeah. But I knew I didn't want to do that, bro. I was working on my dreams. I was on, a lot of times when I was out of there. I was on the road. You feel me? I was out of state, Louisiana. Yeah. I was in New York. You feel me? Chicago. Hell yeah. I wasn't worried about Chrysler. No, because I was. I got in that bitch. I remember this old head was like, nigga, when you in here, nigga, you in this bitch. You ain't gonna never leave. Like he like, nigga, you you stuck. And then I used to be looking at niggas. Me and my producer talking about this shit last night, dog. Like niggas taking overtime. Niggas hella working. Like yo, shit already fucking ten hours. Niggas coming in two hours before, two hours after. Bro, you, the checks be looking like a hundred and something <laughs> hours, bro. What the type of? This is weekly. You know what I'm saying? And niggas be like, yeah, we getting that money. Like, cause you working, <laughs> you living in that bitch, bro. You going home to sleep and then you coming right back. For sure. Hell I'm yeah. I'm telling you, bro. It was sometimes where I would pick up a double and literally they will stop the line. And like, I'll put like a cup there or something. When I get back, bro, that same cup there, it's like I'm, they start the line right back up where I left off. Exactly, shit, dog. Exactly, dog. That, that should be smooth. I think it was a little bit better working at the plant when you was like, like grandparents' ages and shit. Cause they got... You know what I'm saying? They, I don't know when you retired, they was living good like my granddad and shit like that, but it's like it's a good job. Yeah. If you want to if you want a 9 to 5 and you you want something consistent and you want you feel me, it's a good job to provide for your family. Yeah. It's not a good job for the for the family dynamics though. You Man, feel me? Like not at all. The plant life, bro, <laughs> you going to lose your whole family in that bitch. Yeah, yeah, that's you feel a different shit. Just, yeah. Man, what? If you a man and your woman worked a night shift at Chrysler, consider her to the wolves, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's over. You feel it me? Is, That's it any is. plan, bro. If she clocking in that night, bro, she's spending the night with niggas. So. Yeah, yeah. And you feel me? They <laughs> pillow talking, everything. You bait her mad during that day. She go to work. She telling him everything. Bro. Hey, you know what this nigga did? What? Bro. Damn. Bro, that's the worst shit to argue with your with your with your lady, and mm. then you gotta go work and shit. <laughs> that's on your mind and shit. Like you said, she nigga Craig over here just talking her ear off and shit, nigga. Cause you on the line, you ain't got shit but to do but talk to niggas and work and shit, dog. So yeah, he just I seen some shit, dog. And that bitch like, damn, these niggas really in this bitch fucking it, going a, bro, a in little break car, and shit. In yeah. a brand new cars, bro. Niggas <laughs> <laughs> getting the car, smell it like like what the? Bro, this is a brand new the, car. Why I smell like that? Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's you wilding, bro. 
Yeah, that shit definitely was. It's for like me, high though. school for adults. No, it is. Niggas coming that bitch like you said. You 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 coming up to the job like like high school is. Everybody rushing to that bitch. Everything, dog. Gotta go to your assigned class, your assigned area and shit. Niggas mm-hmm. that bitch. What 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 uh, department you was in? I was I was working at Jeep. So okay. I was I was all over that bitch, bro. <laughs> like. The thing is, anything I do, bro, I'ma lock in and go hard at that For shit. Sure. So, yeah. so like while I was there, I started out on the line on like the hardest job. But within like two months, bro, they had me in the back in like the paint shop and yeah. pulling tape off, and I was doing penalty jobs for months. Yeah. Like they was looking out because every time they put me on a hard job, I didn't complain. I just did that shit. For sure. Hell that's yeah. That's one piece of advice. Like if you in in Chrysler, bro, when they put you on like harnesses or or anything that's a hard ass job. Bro, work your ass off Because I guarantee you If they see you working hard They're going to put you On some cake ass jobs <laughs> Hell yeah Hell yeah Because I, I looked up And got right into the paint department That shit was easy yeah, That's why I finished up at I was on finesse bro I was just literally I was sand a little spot Put yep. a tape <laughs> Hell yeah <laughs> And I'll be watching TV All day on my phone Bro I was chilling It was a cake job But it was the time That I had to give to it Time is money bro And nah, if you facts. giving 12, 13 hours And then it was the commute It was next to hour You feel me From Toledo So yeah. you giving all that time To this place You really ain't got time For yourself Man hell yeah Hell yeah dog Hell yeah But shit get off that job Shit man Fuck them jobs <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shout out to niggas Still working out Nowadays bro You need that shit no, I ain't gonna lie yeah, Nowadays yeah. if you trying to make You need a hustle And a job Because For sure, For sure. Shit like Triple, bro. Yeah, no. You feel me? Everything. I just tell. I just told him, nigga, to walk out the house by yourself as a man. You damn near gotta be prepared to spend one fifty. Just to every enjoy day, your time, bro. Every day, cause yeah. you got some gas, nigga. Yep. If you smoke food, <laughs> and then you got kids. You, if you got kids, bro, you go to the oh, gas station. You spending over. thirty, forty dollars, nigga. I, mm-hmm. That's why I stopped giving my kids McDonald's, dog. Cause when I realized, nigga, how much you spend for a family at McDonald's is like fifty dollars. Yeah, and then that shit could be trash as fuck. Yeah, you got two Happy Meals, nigga. My my son eating motherfucking adult food. Me and my wife, nigga. Nigga, that's too much money, dog, for this shit to be trash. It is. It's better <laughs> off cooking. But then, it's like, you spend $45 at the grocery store, and then you spend $45 at McDonald's. You like, do I feel like cooking? <laughs> it's the same shit. You feel me? For sure. The same money, so. Hell yeah, then my family, yeah, like, they can't eat leftovers and shit. Like, bro, I lived off leftovers growing up, nigga. My mama, if she made some shit like chili and spaghetti, that was a three-day meal. Yeah, I, I fuck with leftovers. It's just after three days, I can't, I can't, I can't do like a week long spaghetti. <laughs> I can't. My girl, she she sit up there and eat some spaghetti for like two weeks, bro. I'm like, bro, throw that shit out. <laughs> I'm for sure. You for sure get three, maybe four. Depends on how how broke I am. My Don't girl. let it be lasagna, bro. That shit is sit there to pan done. Like, <laughs> Hell yeah, dog. But shit, man, talk about this year, dog. With, with personal and and career wise, like, how was this year for you? What what's some shit you wanted to see and some shit that you achieved? This year, man. This year was like eye opening. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I you feel it's 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 weird, bro. I'm in a weird position mm-hmm. because people look at me like I did so much or like I did this shit, but I don't feel like I did enough. Yeah. So it's like a weird point in my career. Like I don't feel like I did enough. I don't feel like I like. You look back like, yeah, I worked with a lot of people. I did all this shit, but I, I don't feel like it's enough. I, don't, I had, didn't change the world. Yeah. I ain't, you feel me? I ain't do nothing great. So mm-hmm. I was trying to do that this year. I was trying to implement a lot of shit to get that shit going. But it's hard to get people on the same, you feel me, the same mindset. Yeah. So, like, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to do this. Boom, 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 drop tapes. But everybody dealing with their own lives. Hell, yeah. So this shit was like... Like I started this year, but I feel like I didn't finish. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's I feel like I'm finishing this year. I'm finishing. I'm so mad because the, the summer went by so fast. Yeah, that bitch flew. Man, there's so much shit I want to do. So yeah, yeah, it's like an unfinished year. If I describe this year, I finish. I just, like I started a lot of shit and I, I wasn't able to finish everything I wanted to do. What's some shit that could have been done that would have made this year a lot better and shit in your eyes? A team, yeah. I ain't got no team, bro. Since day one, I had my nephew working with me. Shout out to uh, Tamo. I had him working with me for a few years, but he got a family and shit now. So it's really just me. You feel me? Like a lot of people don't realize when it's just you and bro. I be on the road. I, I hit different states. Mm-hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm I editing. I'm doing the engineering. I'm the pocket. Everything I'm doing, all this different shit. So yeah. It's like if I had a team, if I had, if I could just sit down and do this, and then won't well, go edit that for me. I can shoot here and do this. Then you feel me? Go do that. I feel like a lot of shit would just move smoother. I would probably be rich now. Hell yeah. But it's hard to get people to. But then when you say it, it's, it's, then it's, to get a team, it's hard to trust niggas too at the same time. Cause you gotta know, like, damn, is they in this bitch for the right reasons? They, they never do, bro. They you know always, they always come to me. People come to me like, and that's why I'm so skeptical about like linking with people because it's always, what can you do for me type situation you feel exactly. me? 
Like they come with their hand out and it's like, bro, like you, uh, if you, if I could see if you was coming over here with your hand out, but you were saying, hey, bro, I'm trying to make some money, but let's turn this shit up so we can make the most money possible. Hell yeah. You feel me? Not yeah. just, oh, I'm trying to make some money, help me make some money type shit. Like, Hell yeah. Niggas don't be thinking like that though, though. Like, you know how easy it'd be if niggas just collaborate on some shit, though. Like, this shit be easy as fuck, nigga. You got a nigga, okay, you, nigga, you do this shit with the camera, or you do this shit behind the camera, or you do this shit on the mic, pause. You do this shit as far as like making business deals, like, all right, let's work together. But then you got niggas who be jealous. Like, if I see me and you working together and you got more motion than me, I'm jealous now. So now, like, fuck him, man. Fuck uh, GMT, dog. He, he on some whole ass shit, you know what I'm saying? So it's well, They feel up. like it's going to dim their light. Mm hmm. Like, oh, if, if I work with bro, then, then people going to want to work with him. They're not going to want to work with me. Or if I shout him out, then he going to get more money or more customers. And the people not going to work. And it ain't like that, bro. Yeah. Like, it was a time in this shit, like, where the cameramans and the producers, like, everybody used to just link. I know the producers still kind of do it. But, like, like the directors, the directors, bro, they act like they got real beef in this shit. <laughs> this ain't even that serious. Mm -hmm. Like, when I came in this game, bro, like, when I started shooting videos, I didn't even want to shoot videos. It was just... Because nobody wanted to work with me because I didn't have a name. Yeah. But I ha I had a song with Sada Baby at the time, and I'm like, bro, I'm shopping it around trying to get all these niggas trying to shoot this shit. Hell yeah. And nobody wanted to shoot it for me. Yeah. So it's like I bought a camera and shot that shit myself. And then when I seen that niggas wanted to pay me to do it, I just started doing it. So it's like they created their own worst villain type <laughs> shit. You know? Hell yeah, dog. Now, and speaking of working with people, I see you, your, your tape you put out uh, last year, you did that with DLDBH. Yeah, I, how that shit? How that shit? Uh, how that, how that link happened, dog? Like, you know what I'm saying? That's my god, DLDBH. When I was rapping, when I first started rapping, he shot my first video. Mm -hmm. you feel me? He pulled up on the block and shot my first video. So yeah. like, I'm knowing him since like the beginning of all this shit. Mm -hmm. Um, and he just, you know, we can go months without talking, like shit. And I hit him up like, hey, bro, I need some beats, or he hit me up for anything. And yeah. you feel me? It's always. All right, boom, I got you. For sure. You know what I'm saying? He sent me a whole pack. I went through it and everything. We had some good songs on that tape, too. We had uh, Rudy. We had some people from um, uh, Kentucky. I got a lot of artists in Kentucky. That it, it was a good tape, too. Now, tell me. I know you probably be like, man, these niggas in Detroit will be on some whole ass shit. I know you probably reached out to some niggas that are like, <laughs> you know how niggas be, man. You try working shit, but then you got to go to, you, you say you got people from Kentucky. Was there a time that you were trying to reach out to Detroit artists and they was on some bullshit, like not wanting to fuck with you or whatever? What I learned about this shit, bro, the people that fuck with you gonna fuck with you. Mm -hmm. Facts. You feel me? Like, cause I've worked with everybody in Detroit. Yeah. Like, if you, if you, if you in Detroit, you know anything about Detroit, just type your favorite Detroit artist mm -hmm. and then type GMT. Yeah, it was on that motherfucker. It's, it's gonna <laughs> pop up, bro. Yeah. It's gonna pop. I know everybody. Yeah. I may not know them personally. You know what I'm saying? But we worked. Yeah. You know, it's, you feel me? So. <clears throat> If a nigga don't answer my DM, I know it, you, I know you see it. You just yeah. don't want to answer it. So I don't really. Yeah, do you look at like you doing these videos, even though they paying you for this shit? Do you look like all right? Bet when I get when I come around and I got a tape to present, I want you on there. You do you feel like it should be easier to get them on since they work with you already? I mean, yeah, in my opinion, it should. But then I can't say that because like, like Rudy, shout out Rudy, bro. He probably like one of the coolest artists I had tapped into in the city, like. You feel me? He never been on no weird shit. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, he got a buzz. He be going viral and everything. But like, anytime I need him, like, hey, bro, can you do the song for me? Yeah. Like, we yeah. got a song together and everything. He yeah. ain't have to do that shit. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Exactly. Hell he yeah. like he like one of the real ones. But yeah. everybody ain't cut from the same cloth. So, niggas, you, you like, <clears throat> bro, when I was coming up, a lot of rappers I was coming up with, nigga, I'll pick them up from their crib and take them to the studio type shit before yeah. they had a buzz. Yeah. You feel me? Like, faithfully. And these same niggas won't even answer your DMs. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. And I ain't asking you for shit. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I don't need nothing. Yeah. I ain't asking niggas for nothing. But you feel me? I feel like shit. If everybody continue to work, if it wasn't like, oh, I'm only working with this person. Mm. I'm only working with, oh, I'm not working. Then everybody could eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. I was kind of forced to go outside of Detroit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so. And you hear that a lot, though. Niggas saying they got to go outside to tap in with people. If that's, like I said, producers, that other artists, like. <laughs> They get more love outside. And it's almost like we was talking about how niggas don't show love like family members. Like, you know what I'm saying? I post this podcast. You get strangers to show love and not your family. It's almost kind of like that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't expect it, but you appreciate it. Bro, look at, look at, look at everybody. Like, I don't know if you pay attention to like, like the camera scene and like the videographers and shit, mm -hmm. but just look at everybody. Like, I was the first one to really like take this shit outside of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Like, I go to different states. Nobody else was going. I was going on tour. I was in Chicago, Louisiana, New York, 
uh, Louisville, Kentucky. I was all over. You feel me? We yeah. was on the road. Like me and my nephew, we hit the road and we'd be on the road for weeks. Yeah. And every state we touched, we'd shoot music videos in every state. Yeah, yeah. Niggas was paying top dollar. Like nobody else was doing that shit. Yeah. And this early on, you feel me? This like, damn near not even a year into this shit. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So like I. I know what I've done, and I know what I can do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If niggas don't want to fuck with it, then that's what it is. I'm gonna yeah, just keep yeah. doing what I do, like For the sure. best of my ability, and the shit going. Hell you know yeah, because you're definitely consistent, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that, you said that shit. I heard you say like consistency. That's that's key to anything you do, though. You can't like I be seeing niggas who drop podcasts and niggas drop three episodes and then just quit. Or I see a nigga who rap. I, one thing I don't, talk to me about this, dog. When a nigga rap or a singer, they drop something to promote like they they project and shit, but they only do it for that week. And then they just like fuck it. I promoted it for one week and I'm done with it. Like, how you feel artists should go promotion wise when they got a new project or a new single they dropping? Bro, that's because they're not doing it for no other reason than likes or <laughs> or <laughs> applause. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So when they don't get that, it don't feed they like they endorphins or whatever you call it. They don't feed it. So they they not you feel me? They not motivated to continue doing that shit. Mm -hmm. Let a song go viral. They're going to keep posting and posting and posting and posting it. But yeah. as long as nobody fuck with it. But sometimes they don't realize you only got a thousand people on your page that's following you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to post shit and put money behind it and get more people to see it before, you feel me, they get a chance to even like it. Yeah, yeah They yeah. drop a song and get like 60 views, 100 views, and they think, oh, man, this shit will flop. No, only 100 people seeing <laughs> the song, yeah, bro. For sure, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then with the algorithm, like you said, you got to be, sometimes you got to repost some shit that you mm -hmm. posted last week and shit, because you never know when that shit going to catch. Just post different parts of it. You mm -hmm. feel me? And post consistently. Yep, yep, you got to, dog, because that's why I, 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 I realized, like, you got to look at the timing when niggas really, really be watching your shit. You guys to be consistent with that shit, bro. And like the I said, time, so now the time. I don't think the time matter because I post shit. You don't think so? Early in the morning, I post shit. Late at night, like I post shit whenever. Yeah. Sometimes shit go up like at any time. It depends. To me, it's more so. You got to be able to like tug at like a heartstring or something. You got to connect with somebody. So if mm -hmm. your post can connect with somebody, it it'll like go viral. Yeah. If it's not connected with nobody, if it's just a post with some words, or if the song's not really talking about shit, yeah, you feel me? Then it ain't gonna really do nothing. Yeah, man, because he was telling me about that shit, like the title, the shit you post, like it's gonna catch my eye. Like we posted some shit with a girl that we had did an interview with in Milwaukee. It was talking about her pussy, like you gonna die by this pussy. That bitch got views just off the motherfucker. <laughs> off the title, yeah. because people want to click. Like what pussy, the fuck they talking about. Yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, dog. Now you said something that caught my ear, dog. When you said um, paying to get to paying to get your shit seen. Um, when you're a new artist, dog, like you got the Detroit Rap Daily, Detroit Rap News, shit like that. Do you feel like it's worth it paying to get your shit on there, even though you might not get the views or the, the engagement off of that post? You didn't pay fifteen hundred dollars, yeah, yeah, bro. It's very important. Like these, these like blogs and these, um, you feel me? These pages that post people music, mm. like a lot of people follow them. And uh, they look to these pages for like like the news. These are like the new age news channels. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Especially and if you if you in like this space, this music space. So if you post yourself on every blog, the appearance is that you went viral. Yeah. A lot of times you think somebody went viral. Like no, they label just posted them on academics, no jumper, everything. Mm -hmm. So now in your mind, you think, damn, I've been seeing this person on all the pages all day long. Mm -hmm. That they gonna go viral. Yeah, you feel me? Sure, you can for force sure. that shit, bro. It's, it take a little money, but you can force that shit. Yeah, yeah. So on a smaller scale, just tap into all the platforms around you that you can get a hundred dollars, fifty dollars, doing. And when you drop a song, do that shit. You make sure that rollout is in the same day. Mm -hmm. You don't want to post it here, okay, and then wait two weeks to post it on this one. Yeah. Like the same day, if you dropping your music video tomorrow, then every blog in your city. And that you can get in touch with should be posting a clip of your video exactly tomorrow. Yeah, shout out to Forum. He cool as hell too. A hey, cool. I like this shit. You said <coughs> something the other day, bro. This was uh, yesterday to be exact. You had said this music shit is so watered down and lame. Y'all support the weakest, the weakest shit. Man, hell yeah, bro. <laughs> like talk like right. Like, I always say it's, it's about being popular, dog. Like shout out to uh, Q the boy. He was just saying it's like it's just a dick sucking contest. Like who? Oh, he sucking his Shout dick. Out to right. him. I just ran into him last night, bro. Yeah, that's my oh, god, that's dog. Cool dude. Yeah, so it's like they just like all right, that's the cool shit. Let's go support it, even though it might not sound good, might not be good, but everybody supporting it. Let's run to it instead of this person who really got talent. You know what I'm saying? So just talk about that and what you was you was meaning behind that shit. Because man, I've worked with so many artists in the city. I say this all the time, bro, and I'm not ashamed to say it. I've worked with so many artists in the city that deserve the spotlight. Mm -hmm. That people don't fuck with because 
they looking for that viral moment or they looking for somebody that went viral like the and then they'll put all their attention behind somebody that's not gonna make it bro mm. <laughs> they're not gonna make it yeah. and i'm not saying they can't make it but it's like their music is not gonna be lasting because they're making music for their moment mm -hmm. and it's artists that i've heard their music i'm like damn bro this yeah. should be like this is like grammy yeah. worthy music yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah, for sure. but they the niggas not tapping into them mm -hmm. and i promise you if like these so-called like gatekeepers because it's people that go around the city and they like to call themselves the gatekeepers like the, if they was really gatekeepers bro they would they would have all these up and coming artist numbers, not just the popular artists. Yeah, you feel for me? Sure. Hell They'd yeah. be pulling artists up. It should be like a bragging right. Like, damn, nigga, I got ten artists signed last month. Yeah, it ain't like that. Hell yeah, no, <laughs> not at all, dog. They, they, they taking the they, they proud saying they, they got niggas signed that was already big. Doing, you yeah. feel me? He didn't really need you. Like yeah. that nigga was doing a, a million views by itself. Mm -hmm. All you did was say, hey, look at this. Like he was gonna do it regardless. Yeah, but it's people that ain't really got that chance. Mm -hmm. that spotlight that if they you feel me if somebody looked at them they'd go crazy yeah who are a couple people that you work with that you feel should have a bigger name in the city dog because i have an <coughs> artist on the show and i feel like she was dope as hell listen her music she always come with her verses her name is uh kayla Wan. kayla Wan. she uh she fuck with uh pbl uh what's the name uh Oprah rolling and shit like uh, and she, i know I, yeah i know Oprah. yeah she in this little group uh my cousins or something like that but as a solo act like i feel like nigga, she she dope as hell and definitely need to be uh, heard more like is anybody that you work with in particular that you feel like should have a bigger name man it's so many artists i i hate to say a name and, and then have people leave, but i'm <laughs> like, telling you bro i just had some people like a guy in the studio last night cole mm -hmm. you know i just dropped some takes with some artists cole you feel me uh sky latisse i dropped a tape with her i, I seen that shit yeah um jizzle on the beat i dropped a tape with her um i've been working with uh Nikki Nicole, mm. she fire. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of talented artists in the city, but these just the, the people that I've been working with. It's so many that's like that I didn't name. Mm -hmm. That's like fire. Like you said, Seven Spitter, she was up here. Like it's a lot of them, a lot of the guys. It's a it's a it's a female dominated game right now. I yeah. can't say that. You know what I'm saying? So I, a lot of females really got the torch right now. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it ain't sure. over for the guys. You know what I'm saying? They just gotta make some good music. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, it's man, a lot of. I, I, can't even name all of them, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. I, it, I'll be naming names. No, because you, day. like I said, you work with a lot of motherfuckers, so you don't want to name. Hey, nigga, I would work with you. You say I was cold too, nigga. You forgot about me. <laughs> bro, I promise you. Like I, I shot over 501 mics, over 2,000 music videos. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, and he's all over the country. Yeah. So like, I've worked with so many artists that I feel like, damn, if somebody just, and that's why I be trying to provide like a platform for artists to kind of get known on, but. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And you be giving out hella deals. I be seeing like every once in a while you drop that bitch down to 60 bucks and shit. Yeah. I do that for the people that, you feel me, that really can't afford it. I hate doing it. I ain't even lie. <laughs> I hate doing it. Because what comes with it is so much like headache and and you deal with like like a different caliber of person. Not saying that everybody that can't afford to spend. But if you if you say, okay, this is all the lowest price and then you're going to get up people with bad attitudes and mm -hmm. and entitled and everything and he's like bro you only spent yeah not you feel me <laughs> so a quarter of what you really should be spending man yeah. and i was talking to somebody like this marketing uh this marketing special specialist or whatever the other day and he was telling me like man you're selling yourself short you shouldn't be shooting for nothing under like nine hundred a thousand. Look at what you did, this and that. Mm. And I be understanding that, but like, like one time I was charging like two bands for videos. Mm. It was cool. Like I was shooting and everything. I was still working in and out of state, mm. but it like alienated me from a lot of the like the people I like working with. You yeah, feel me? Like the sure. everyday artists that's really grinding. Mm -hmm. Like I, if I was like a coach, like a like in the league, bro, I'd rather coach college. You yeah. feel me? Because yeah, yeah. I feel like they'd be more hungry. And that's why I like working with like the underground unsigned artists. Because mm -hmm. you get the, the bigger artists, they start feeling entitled. Like, yep. like yeah. bro, like you feel me? You be bigger from the beginning and then it's like when they get big, it's just their whole mindset changed. Yeah, yeah. Not too many artists stay the same. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What 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 you think that be from? Because niggas ain't used to get money or niggas ain't used to being known. Like what They're not used to attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Niggas the start acting different and shit. Money ain't it because of the money. Bro, if, if niggas like Meek Mill complaining about money, mm -hmm. you think a, a, a local artist that's doing 200 300,000 views and that 70,000 you think they really yeah. eating off their music yeah. like let's be real no for sure you know what I'm saying if these niggas that's big <laughs> actors and select they complain about money mm -hmm. 
bro, everybody in streaming, you in they, you're not seeing these people doing features, you're not seeing them getting booked for shows. You they're not eating off streams. Mm -hmm. Like the streams numbers it, that shit little to here and there. You yeah, feel me? For sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You definitely like I said, when you talk about hustles with music, you gotta have different hustles. Yeah, you that's why I see you do different things from podcasts, from the one mics, from videos, from studio sessions. So you're doing it all. Yeah, I but I don't do everything to try to get more money out of everybody. I do everything because I'll be trying to provide a way for niggas. Mm -hmm. You yeah, feel me? Facts, facts. Like, all right, I was shooting the videos first, then I seen that niggas they was coming with me with coming to me with they um they songs I'm mixing and I said, okay, well let me. I used to record myself, but let me do this for them. Let me yeah. open a studio. And then you if you feel me like the platforms or I see you feel me the 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 mics and shit, all that shit going crazy. Let me build a platform for y'all to go crazy on. Hell yeah. Y'all need this. Let me do that. That's the type of shit I be on. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Now as like somebody who come into the game new, you know what I'm saying a new producer, a new um, videographer or engineer or whatever. How you feel they should approach pricing? Like, if they don't have anything to advertise and they new to this shit, should they be reasonable? Should they, fuck it, hey, this is my price? Like, how should they go about things? So, like a, like a cameraman that's trying to... Let's, let's go for a cameraman, yeah, who just shooting videos and he just starting off. But he ain't got nobody, you know what I'm saying? He just, he from the ground zero beginning. Um, So your price be your price or you should just be like, all right, let me go ahead. You shouldn't really be charging for nothing yet. Yeah. Like, when you just start, bro, like, like build your catalog up. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Shoot like shoot as many videos as you can for the for the the biggest people you can get in touch with mm -hmm. or the best music and go crazy on that shit and get like hone your skills. Mm -hmm. You out if you jump out the gate trying to start charging niggas, bro. That you ain't <laughs> go. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, Unless like you it. just already cold and you know you could do this shit. But if you if you know that you building, you gotta t take some time, steal some shit. You gotta learn. Mm -hmm. Like, bro. Get good at it first. Yeah. The money gonna come for sure. And see, that's the one thing niggas don't understand. The money's gonna fucking come. Like, well, ours I always make this joke though. Like, I'll be laughing when ours be like, "Yeah, this is special." In the summer, five hundred for a feature. Like, <laughs> like nigga, like you ain't popping. Like, I don't believe. Like, no disrespect, but why would I pay you five hundred dollars? What is it gonna do for my song? Bro, I was thinking about artist. that the other day. I said, because I'll be seeing that shit. But I, I'm like, I'm like, why are you charging? For a feature and you have not made that much money off your music <laughs> exactly you feel me Facts. you haven't even made 500 dollars off your music mm -hmm. off you your streams off of nothing yeah. but so why are you charging that you feel me mm -hmm. you're not doing it for the right reasons you jumping the gun mm -hmm. you feel me you're not doing now if you gotta like if you locked in with a platform and you like all right um if you do this feature with this artist you're gonna get a video you're gonna get posted here it mm -hmm. makes sense because it's strategic mm -hmm. but if you just you feel me? Come on, man. Yeah, man. Because, like, when niggas... And then I remember when niggas was paying, like, doing that COVID shit. You know, rappers was getting over and shit. Like, nigga, get a motherfucking verse from Fat Joe and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it's like... Bro, everybody was eating during the pandemic. Duh, for sure. But it's like, it was no promotion. So, like, even with Detroit artists, like... I know you said you did the uh, song with Silent and he did the video as well with you. But, like, you got those artists that you paying however much you paying and they not posting on their page. They not even gonna come for the video. It's just you say, hey, I got this nigga on my song, but... He ain't fucking do shit, you know what I'm saying, as far as advertising or, or pushing it. The only other artist, like, I, because I, I, I got songs with, like, a lot of people. So, you know, in Flint, I had went through Flint and did artists, with, songs with all of them. Mm -hmm. um, the only one that, that other artist that I ran into that I was like, bro, he does business well, mm -hmm. um, was Rio. Okay. Uh, Rio, like, he handled his business, bro, like, mm -hmm. Straight, I ain't have to worry about nothing. I ain't have to call this man more than once. Mm. Like, and I, it wasn't even like like I bumped in, into him in the studio. You feel me? And I'm mm. like, hey, can you hop on this song? He listened to it. He like, oh yeah, I got you. For one. sure. One, I gave him what I had, and he was cool with it. Yeah. I said, hey, matter of fact, can I throw you a couple extra? Cause I had dropped this little hoodie at that time, like Get Money Team hoodie. I'm like, can you throw this hoodie on in the video? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because I was trying to sell it. It, sure. it boosted the sales and everything. But he threw it on. I gave him a, a, a couple extra hundred. He threw it on in the video. He mm -hmm. was there. He ain't even charged me extra for the video type shit. Yeah. And then I like there. I'm like, hey, bro, can I throw you half and then throw you half? He like, hell yeah, it don't matter. Yeah. You feel me? And that's to this day. That's like one of my biggest songs. I I made my money back off that song. I that's still dope. make money off that song. Like you feel me? That's good business. Yeah. Everybody don't do that. Like you do a song with a nigga and. They, <laughs> You know how many times I shot a, I shot a feature video and the 
the artist that's on the big artist sitting there on his phone in the video or yeah. like not don't even you feel me he does not care about the, the video yeah and i'll be looking like bro this man just pay you thousands yeah to and you can't even give him the courtesy to look, look like yeah. you want to be here give me a little energy bro like you know what I'm saying i ain't gonna shout this person out because they gonna know who it is if i mention who they related to but they was getting um features and i'm like you could tell they were getting that motherfucking d-verse all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> not the pause, but they was getting that that that, that weak ass verse that they just had in the tuck. Like, fuck, I'm gonna throw it on that bitch and charge them two thousand for the verse. Like, he had some niggas on that bitch, but I was just like, every time I heard the verses from people, I'm like, damn. Like he phoned that shit in. Yeah, like he just got the the, the trashiest verse that nigga had. Like, so sometimes it it, it, it looked good, but then nigga listen to the song like this is terrible. Like, but niggas be thinking I get that person on the song is gonna blow that bitch up and really ain't doing shit but fucking your pockets up. And you could use that money, I guess, to invest in yourself and make. Your shit a little bit better than what it is. You can. You rather put it's, it's sometimes it's better just to put that money behind your own music and marketing. Mm-hmm. Cause you gonna you gonna pay for dead end features. Yeah. You don't want to do that shit. <laughs> you yeah. feel me? That's a waste of money and time. For sure. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, well, how um looking at it, like you said, you couldn't find nobody to shoot your video when you did your song. How happy are you that you wind up doing it yourself? Because how how do you feel things would be if you would just say fuck? I'm gonna be an artist and that's it. Like you didn't pick up this motherfucking camera and none of that shit. How you how you how you think things would be? I st- I think I'll still be like where I'm at type mm-hmm. shit. I might be like I'll probably be like more known as an artist. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I feel like in life you're gonna end up where you're gonna be anyways, no matter what route. Mm-hmm. Like that's why you see somebody that's like good at football and then they. Or, or or they get hurt and then they go and act and they like success. It's like if you if you know you are gonna be good, yeah. you are gonna be good regardless. And man, what you do? Yeah, but yeah. I feel like I I would have missed out on a lot of experiences that I've had. Like mm-hmm. I do like doing music videos, but I've been like everywhere. Mm-hmm. I've worked with so many people. I was at like wilding out backstage in the green room, chilling with everybody. Yeah, I was shooting for videos for um. Jojo Simmons in New York. Mm-hmm. I've been shoot, you know, Yo Gotti up on uh, on stages and uh, main music down in Louisiana. Dog. Man, I've been yeah. everywhere. You hell feel? Yeah, me? hell yeah. So, so, so you can talk your shit really, but you just choose to be modest about it. Like I'm gonna chill though. Cause I like, don't know how. It, though, it seems like you're doing a lot of shit. I don't know how to. I don't know how to to brag about shit because what's the point? Yeah. I feel like it's like yeah, I've done all this shit, but I gotta continue to yeah, keep yeah. going. And like you said earlier, you still got things that you feel that you need to achieve that mm-hmm. you still behind on. So from the outside, make me look like you doing a lot, but for you, you like fuck. I got a whole lot more to do and accomplish. No facts. Yeah, a whole lot, bro. I, and the thing about the, the the reason I like doing, like I still make music, like it's fun, you know. But that's a hobby. But mm-hmm. the reason I like doing like everything else because it's like really no time limit on it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You can be 50, 60 years old with a with the biggest label in the world, and you don't have to really look like, oh, am I too old to make music or anything? Mm-hmm. Like you can still talk your shit, and, yeah. and you feel me? You can still sign artists. You can still move around like nothing. You know what I'm saying? The, mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is, if you blessed to see tomorrow, you gonna get older. For sure. You feel oh, me? Yeah. And as a rapper, like it, it, I try, I man, I give all rappers this advice. Like, if you're gonna rap, make sure you got you got a plan for after rap. Mm-hmm. You feel yeah, me? Because yeah. like rap is cool, but a lot of time that's just like to get your bag. Mm-hmm. Once you get some money, like you gotta you gotta start some businesses, real estate, do mm-hmm. something plan for after. Because a lot of times a rap career might last like five years. Yeah, because you look at niggas like what's name? That nigga rich as hell and they ain't got nothing to do with music, dog. Chameleonaire. That nigga started off and he dropped I'm riding dirty this that and the third and shit, He's dog. Smart. And now he he. It, Shit, courtside the motherfucking Gold State Warriors championship game. Mm-hmm. Like he invested his money to some tech shit, some other shit, and he ain't got his bag. He did that little shit with the rap for a little bit and said, "Fuck that shit, I gotta get to some real money." You and know just what look at the niggas that that didn't think smart and I had to go back to the street and crashed out. You feel mm-hmm. me? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. It's two stars to the coin. That's why you gotta be smart about that shit. Yeah. That's when anything in life you ever touch some money, bro. You gotta you gotta set yourself up for tomorrow because especially if it's some like some money that's just boom. You don't know if that shit gonna come again. For sure, for sure. And, and, but it'd be hard for, like you said, niggas coming from areas where they never seen money. For you know, saying mom struggled, dad was struggled, and shit like that. So when they do get that money, they not thinking. They just think about spending. You know, what I'm saying let me get these buffs and shit. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> saying like bullshit instead of sitting here saying how can I triple this money I got right now? You know, what I'm saying but you can get all of that, bro. Mm-hmm. The the buffs, the cars, the cribs, the girls, everything. All that shit gonna come. 
once you get your money right, <laughs> yeah, you sure. me? That's like that'll bring everything together. Yeah. But they be trying to jump the gun and focus on all this shit, but like you making it harder on yourself because now yeah. you're trying to maintain this shit. Yeah, just get your bag right, get your bag right, and then you can talk your shit and live your life the way you want to live. For sure, hell yeah, hell yeah. When last time you cried, cuz? <laughs> the last random. time I cried, that has shit to do with that. Like I, this this podcast, if you don't know, it's random, nigga. Like we go from here to here. <laughs> I, I be want to see if niggas gonna answer that question and shit, dog. Some real yeah, shit. No, that's a real question because if I if I <laughs> was the type of person to cry, yeah. Like if I really like if I I don't think I got no tears left in me right now. Yeah. But if I was like I, it probably would have been a couple weeks ago when my uh my YouTube channel got deleted. Yeah. It got hacked and deleted. And Damn. bro, it was like on some. Like I've been talking to this company for weeks. They making me think that we gonna do like a collab on some business and shit. Mm -hmm. They sending me the the like the proof and the media kits and what they need me to do mm -hmm. i'm talking to the representative and they send me the contract soon as they send me the contract i download it and like and open it up on my computer it like hack everything my Damn. email and you know like your emails be connected to everything, everything your phone yeah, yeah. everything so I, it locked me out of everything so i'm like fuck yeah, if I was cry, I probably would have cried right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. It was like bro, I slapped my steering wheel like, fuck, no, it hurt. Duh. You did me, but yeah, man, that shit crazy, man. Now, uh, you you're Muslim, right? Mm -hmm. Talk talk about talk about that. Like, how long have you been Muslim? Is it from your parents and my, go, yeah, my whole life. And going to Israel, you went to Israel, not too no, long ago. Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, yeah. Yep. Talk about that experience for you, like seeing something different from you, you know, United States and shit. You know what I'm saying? Man, it was. It was like eye opening because it's, it makes you realize that the world is so much bigger. <laughs> Fact, you yeah. feel me? Like so, and you even if you travel around America, it's cool. But like mm -hmm. to actually see that as the other side of the world, and like on the plane, they had like this little map to where you could see yourself flying over the ocean. Yeah, and like just to see that you're on the other side of the world, mm -hmm. it was like eye opening. And then the culture, like for once in your life, you feel like the the nigga that can't understand yeah. English you feel me cause sure. nobody speak English so yeah. you sitting up there trying to communicate to them mm -hmm. like just to buy simple shit you feel like the foreigner you yeah. know what I'm saying yeah. it's like it's it's a humbling experience mm -hmm. spiritual awakening it's like you feel me it's it, it, everything you feel yeah. me I, I'm trying to go to Japan next bro like that's yeah. what I'm trying to do man. I remember watching uh, Malcolm X man cause my dad was into the uh, into Malcolm X heavy Elijah Muhammad shit like that and I remember watching that. It seemed like once he had left the United States to go, I think he had went to Israel in the movie, and he seen that being a Muslim was more than just being. Oh, he a, went to Saudi too. So he went to make okay. Hajj. Yeah, yeah. To, uh, and he, he, seen, Kaaba, he yep. seen that it was so much bigger than what it was back home. I feel like when he came home, he was almost too powerful. Then once he made that trip and shit like that, mm -hmm. dog, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I seen. I was doing my little research and seeing that. So I'm like, I was right. right there at the Kaaba, like, like my hotel. When you walked out the door, it's like, like literally like ten feet. Mm -hmm. And you're like walking through the gates. Yeah. You feel me? And it was just the whole city just marble, the floor of marbles. It just looked crazy. The sunshine and the birds flying on. Yeah. It, it's crazy. It man. Looked like an oasis or something. You know that what was, I'm saying? That was dope, man. You, you, was that something that kind of like helped you out as far as like you know, your way of thinking? Just, you know what I'm saying? Seeing, like you said, you saw more than just being at the crib and shit, dog. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it kind of it kind of broadened my, my I feel, little, feel like my eyesight. Like it made me see more. Mm hmm. And it just kind of calmed my spirit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It made me realize. You feel me? Like it's it's just more out here. No, it is. Is it hard to be an artist when you don't see nothing but your hood? Like yeah. you got niggas that just never left the east side, go to the west side, and vice versa. Like you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of artists that I have worked with, bro. Because I like that I traveled a lot. So like they'll do a feature or they'll want to shoot out of town. I'll be like, yeah, come on, let's hop on the road. So. There's a lot of artists that never been out the city, mm -hmm. and we in New York, mm -hmm. and like they like, bro, I never been out of Detroit. Yeah, and like they acting like you feel me, like <laughs> you feel me. It really you could tell it's nah. changing the way they think about life too. Yeah, for sure. You, yeah, it's crazy because like I said, I got homies, I got people that just like nigga, they never left the east side for real. Like they never on the west side unless they go into a chick house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Real quick, but like niggas is stuck in what they see every day. You they know in a saying? box, bro. And yeah. if they seeing bad shit, that's just all they gonna be about. Exactly. And that's why I say as an artist, it's just like, you know, listen to the same music. Like I feel like a nigga like Snoop Dogg, I ain't saying cause I got the shirt on, but <laughs> a nigga like him is a great artist because he listened to more than just rap. You know what I'm saying? He got you know what I'm saying, he listened to different genres, reggae, you know, oldies, new, R and B. Like, I don't believe you could be a good artist when you stuck listening to one type of music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and he's a good example of what you should do after music. Yeah, hell yeah. Like he's a brand now. You know what I'm saying? I was just thinking about that the other day because I seen him on TV, and then on the way here, I was looking at a, like a YouTube video, 
And um, he was like selling a grill. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And I'm like, bro, this nigga making a million. <laughs> yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? Hell yeah, hell yeah. But just think about how if weed was like how it is now back then, how how big he would have been. You yeah. know, because he said he lost a lot of sponsorships and deals because of him smoking. But now niggas and you know embrace that smoking shit, so he would have been an even bigger artist if that's possible. If that shit was how it is now. Facts. You know what I'm saying? But it's, that's all because this is conspiracies, bro. They found out how to wait, how to tax it. Mm -hmm. Once they found out how they make money off of it, they made it legal. Yeah, hell yeah. You feel yeah. me? It was never something that was going <coughs> to do nothing bad. You feel me? Yeah, hell yeah. What's been some of your biggest mistakes you have made uh, that kind of like maybe held you back in, in uh, growing in this music game? Um, I don't feel like they mistakes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I feel like... It made the the journey a little harder, but like I stand my I stand on mine. You feel me mm -hmm. a lot. Like so, I don't I don't let people play with me. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So I feel like that caused a lot of um, situations to where I may have rubbed people wrong, or they don't. You feel me? We don't really see eye to eye, and that probably translated into um, you know them and other meetings. Like oh no, you really don't don't mess with him type mm -hmm. situation. Yeah. So it just forced me to kind of work harder to move around that, but. I don't really feel like I made any too big of mistakes. You know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shit, if it is, it's some shit that you learned from, basically. Yeah, because every L is a lesson, bro. Hell yeah. Every time you lose, I've thrown shows and then make no money. I've had, this is like the third studio I opened, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, because I've had like locations where I've seen it was hard for artists to get to. Mm -hmm. So I don't really like look at anything as like, damn, I lost. I look at it like, well, what did I do wrong? I exactly. do it again. I kind of learned from that shit. Yeah. Yeah, man. Hell yeah. Uh, the name GMT. I know it's Get Money Team. What was your earlier rap name that you had before that that made that um, make the cut? It was I think it was Stalgic, yeah, something like that. Yeah, like GMT came from like my nephew. He we was all sitting around, like when I was young, I was like twenty, right, twenty one, mm -hmm. and like my sister was going through some situations, so she had um some kids, and I had like kind of adopted them through the state, mm -hmm. so they were staying with me, and I wanted to get them like to do something productive, so I'm like, oh, that's you know what I'm saying, I'll help y'all rap, so. Yeah. My nephew, he was like, well, let's call it GMT. Yeah. So he came up with the name. We, that's where that came from. And we yeah. was calling ourselves GMT, Get Money Team. Mm -hmm. And then when they kind of grew up and went their own ways, did their own thing, it kind of just kind of kept the name yeah. and ran with it. Hell yeah. Now, a video. Can a bad video mess up a good song? Like, remember, I don't know if you remember, like, Drake had that song, The Best I Ever Had. Mm -hmm. And then niggas were waiting for that video to drop, and the video didn't make no sense compared to the song. Can a bad video <laughs> fuck up a good song? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, how can a, now can a, a good video help out a bad song? <laughs> like, <laughs> um, like, like then the video was hard. The song was trash, but not for real. If the song bad, it could be so bad that it, it's like viral bad, mm -hmm. and then the video don't really matter. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. The only time the video matters is if the music good. Mm -hmm. The music not good, the video don't really matter. You could really shoot with anybody. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Cause you're not really putting nothing into it, anyways. How you feel about artists who can't afford a, a, a GMT, uh, uh, you know, video, and he just he but he want to get his shit out, and he just like fuck it, I'm gonna get a tripod, set my iPhone up, and do this shit myself. I mean, I respect it. You feel me? I'm not saying that's not gonna work. It could work, but mm -hmm. shit, just tap in with me, type yeah. shit. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It ain't that serious. All that, that, that you gonna go through? You just DM me like, hey, bro, this is what I'm working with. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Can we do something? Yeah, and I'll probably work with you. I, yeah. Like I said, I try to help people, bro. I'm not trying to alienate people or make them feel like this is something that they can't afford to do because mm -hmm. they can't afford to do it if they just work with the right people. Yeah. Do you feel like? With these one mics, a lot of people are doing it. Do you need to, do you see yourself or preparing yourself to transition to something different that you got, you know what I'm saying, that you, you know, creating or whatever in the back right now? Bro, people hate to believe it, but I create the trends. Mm -hmm. In this city, bro, with like the, with like, pay attention to the past. Since I came into this shit, mm -hmm. pay attention to like what I do mm -hmm. and, what and then what everybody else do. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? The 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 one mics, the all that shit, bro. I didn't invent it, but I started the shit for sure. Nobody else was doing that shit in the city, yeah. and I, I I got the biggest platform doing it. Yeah, the most views doing it, the best one doing it. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about in the whole. I'm talking about in my territories, mm -hmm. in Kentucky, and Detroit. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I'm the biggest. Yeah. That's just what it is. So when you see that shit, you be like, this, look at this nigga biting this shit, whole ass nigga. Like, no, I just <laughs> thought it was weird when I started that a lot of people that I fucked with, they didn't say, hey, bro, 
let's link together and, and it, turn this shit up. Exactly. Hell Everybody yeah. buying their own mics trying to do the same thing when it's like, bro, divide and what? Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, niggas just trying some shit like, you know what? But that's, hey man, like I said, acting, the Tubi shit that's popping, rapping, like niggas see that shit and see, like you said, what's, what's popular. Hey nigga, I'm about to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, hey, pay, pay, but pay homage too though. Now, I'm trying to do the, the the like the movies in the series now. I was gonna ask like, you about that too. Yeah, I'm trying to do this series I'm working on, bro. I'm looking for actors and actresses and. Oh shit, nigga, you mm. looking at two of them right here? For real, we yeah, ain't no real actors. Nah, no. <laughs> for this real. This nigga was third number three just uh about. Oh yeah, for <laughs> two real. Two weeks ago, and shit. No, nah, I need to tap in for real. That bro. nigga was drinking fake beer. Shit, I'm like, nigga, you had Arizona. <laughs> They got that shit in the little paper bag and shit, dog. This was for like what a movie? Yeah, his boy, uh, my my, my homie Coke, uh, he he stayed down the street. He be shooting a lot of movies and shit, dog. So yeah, my man, I've been saying for a long time to everybody who come on the show, I want to be third number three. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this nigga took my motherfucking third number three role, dog. <laughs> he he really like a thug out there, though. <laughs> and this nigga got a funny way of making facial expressions on the movies. <laughs> oh shit! No, that... I gotta watch it, man. When is it coming out? Uh, it just had the premiere, so I don't know when it's coming out on Tubi, though. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm in a Tubi movie. That shit came out. I shot that shit three years ago. Really? Is that out yet? I was a coach. I was just a coach, and she mm. just pointing and shit, dog. And uh, it's called uh, The City Guy I Forgot About, but I guess it's the movie they forgot about, too. Niggas <laughs> 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 ain't dropped that shit yet. You ain't but, never seen a clip of it or nothing? Nothing, dog. Damn. No, the niggas supposed to do a little album for it and everything, mm. bro. So you say you so you you got you got any movies in mind? You you wrote some shit? Yeah, or you team I, bro, some I got people? some shit in my head, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm telling you, like, uh, Cause it, bro, I love movies. Ever since I was a kid, bro, I used to go to the library and I used to like watch every single movie. Mm -hmm. Like I took film classes in like not in college and shit, but like in high school because mm -hmm. like I just love movies. I'm like, what do you mean we can watch a movie all day? Yeah, you feel me? Like and write a paper about it. Shit was easy as hell. Yeah. So like I love movies. So like directing, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that's really where my true passion is. Like because I be seeing like movies that drop in the movie theater. Like well, I could have did way better. Yeah, than yeah for sure. You know what I'm saying? So I got some ideas in my head i'm just really looking for again like it's hard to do everything by yourself mm -hmm. if i could be like every role in the movie like i do that shit bro yeah, hell yeah. but i just ain't got the time so like i need people to you feel me fall in place and kind of get this shit going and, and i'm telling you we've won some awards hell off this yeah. shit shout out to my dog verdict man he, he transitioned from being a rapper to shooting movies and shit really uh, hell yeah, movies and verdict he be with uh i said movies and verdict movies and videos he'd be with 36 uh 36 vision Okay, yeah, 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 I heard him, yeah. Yeah, they be doing shit, dog. So shout out to him, dog. Now you do got a studio, like I said, you offer studio time and, and shit like that. Talk about niggas coming to the studio prepared. Because when I was rapping, I guess I wasn't good and shit. But uh <laughs> I used to have my shit, nigga, I was ready. Like nigga, I know my verses, I know the hooks, I know the in and outs and all that shit. Like I'm prepared, like I ain't about to waste this hour. Like, I'ma get it in. Like talk about niggas coming unprepared though. And what they need to do to, you know, saying when they studio etiquettes and when they what they need to do coming in that bitch. Yeah, etiquettes, man. Studio etiquettes. Always take a shower first. <laughs> <laughs> For real, that's like number one, man. Like I hate to sit there next to somebody and they you feel me? And it's <laughs> it's bad, bro. <laughs> it's bad. For sure. That's number one. And then I feel like have your beats. Either I, I don't like downloading beats off YouTube, mm -hmm. but people, you know what I'm saying? That's what they do. So have them already downloaded off YouTube. Mm -hmm. And ha like, if you got my number, if I know you come to the studio at five o'clock, mm -hmm. already send me the beats yeah. while you on your way. Like, hey, these are the beats I'm rapping on. It's mm -hmm. number one, it's number two. So when you get there, I can have a session open up, the yep. beats loaded up. We ready to go. Yeah. We could chop it up a little bit and then you can hop in the booth. For sure. Hell you yeah. feel me? And then, you know, um, some people, everybody don't write. So I'm not going to say come like with your verse ready, mm -hmm. but you should have some type of idea of what you're going to do mm -hmm. or you heard the beat before. Mm -hmm. It just make it smoother. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell mm -hmm. yeah, dog. Because niggas come to that bitch don't have a clue what they doing. They just pay for this time. Now you got smoke, think, reminisce and shit, dog. So, yeah. But I ain't seen that shit. I come to that bitch. I'm trying to do two songs in an hour, nigga. I'm, ah, I'm going through the whole fucking verse, uh, hook everything, dog. Yeah, no, but the studio, bro, it's a vibe. Like, uh, I, like, I try to set it up to where when they come in and record, it's not just like, all right, it's just a booth. And then it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's just a vibe. Mm -hmm. They come in there, like, 
prop money all over band so they'd be like man this this real money i'm like yeah. no it's prop money they love that shit yeah. but you feel me couches in there they got a little basketball hoop in there yeah you know what i'm saying so it's, it's like really like a chill vibe so you can come in there and just be creative mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i'm saying i don't rush people i don't rush sessions or nothing like that for sure now also like i said man you do a lot man you had the podcast uh gmt uh rap reels or whatever you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like talk about that are you still doing it are you know what I'm saying see the podcast for me bro like again if i had a team it would be way easier because mm -hmm. like if you look back on like my interviews i got some big interviews on my channel you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like niggas used to fly in to detroit when they was doing albums mm -hmm. like uh shout out filthy rich he was um on like his his press tour or whatever and he called me you know his people called me like hey he want to do an interview on your platform i'm shocked i'm like my platform yeah. he's like yeah you got a nice platform in the city and he want to sit down with you for you feel me for an interview so we did that interview so i had people flying in and out you feel me mm -hmm. i did interviews when like big shit was going on in the city like them interviews then I, I was doing really good interviews like i was interviewing them asking really good questions mm -hmm. but i shot a lot of interviews it's just i was interviewing shooting editing everything yeah and at He's some like, point it, yeah, yeah. yeah i like doing them like I, just, I got two episodes i just shot like in the studio but i just haven't dropped them yet and yeah. i need to you know just cut them down and drop them yeah so what are you looking for bro like as far as like a team are you like putting out there like i need this i need that let's work let's talk like what like how are you trying to you know saying build this team up so it won't just be you doing every fucking thing i need people that they want to come and help build what's already here mm-hmm Cause a lot of people they want to come around and they want to take from this and put towards their own shit and it's like bro if this house is already halfway built mm -hmm. like come help build it yeah you know what i'm saying because once it's built you're gonna be like one of the founders of that shit. you mm -hmm. feel me you're gonna get a big bag from it because you're gonna be like oh i was there from like really from the start of it you know yeah. what i'm saying Hell yeah. but a lot of people don't think like that so like if i was looking for like a team like i am looking for a team but i just need like people around me that that's looking at the bigger picture that's like we here to make sure this wins like mm. this ship sells mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying hell yeah no for sure for sure now you like i said you put an album together you had different artists on it on, on, the, on the album and you work with uh, a young lady you know what i'm saying as a solo uh act on a, on a project but making a band if you had to come up with an album working with five artists you producing this shit you doing everything but you need five artists who would those five artists be to make to make this album the gmt album Hmm. Any artist, it could be fe female, male, producers, whatever. There's five people that's gonna make your album, and that bitch gonna do his thing. Damn, that's like unknown, right? It's like uh, just people it, I work with. It could be no, it could be known, unknown, whoever. This your shit. I mean, I feel like with the right marketing, it could do anything. But I don't know, cause like if it was like bigger artists, I, my answer would be different. But like, let's right, go big artists then. Let's go mainstream. Mainstream. All right. You and five people to make the album pop. Yep. Ah, uh, you know I do like. You could really like. You could do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so many because you got to do like some of the female artists. You could do like Glorilla yep. or something. You know, like Glow be doing her thing. Though. I ain't gonna yeah, lie to you. <laughs> her. And then you could do like a um. Shit, who else selling right now? Well, I know you could do like a Skiller baby. He kind of popping. Hell yeah! And um, I said the woman love that nigga. Yeah. So. And then you could do a boss man D Lo. Okay. He moving. For you sure. could put a gunner on there too. Gunner sell. Hey, you know what? I ain't really pay attention to the gunner tell the whole snitch allegations yeah. came about. I'm like, damn, this nigga's a dope ass artist. No, he's like, been dope. I fucked with him. And then when the snitcher came, I was really unsure how to take it. But it ain't none of my business, bro. You yeah. Good? But these last two projects he put out, nigga, tough. Fire, yeah. Tough. Yeah, and, and he and he's be selling out. He's like a it's different levels to being an artist. You could be like a like a like a a bar level artist mm -hmm. to where you can have trouble selling out a bar or you can be like an arena level artist mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying every artist can't sell out a little caesar's arena so they won't do a show there like he's an arena level artist no for sure you hell know what yeah. i'm saying hell yeah so you say boss man d-lo glorilla skiller baby gunner uh, yeah and um definitely about to sell <laughs> yeah definitely think it, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> on sale. and then shit who else would i put on there shit i don't know yeah. The last spot, it had to be somebody tough. I probably put Lil Yachty on there or some shit. Yeah. Just because Lil Yachty, like, I or maybe I have him like write one of the songs on that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I don't know. Yeah, Glorilla, yeah. I like her so much because she. I used to love Three Six Mafia. Like she give me those Three Six Mafia vibes. Nigga. Yeah, like, she be talking shit. That's the one female. And she can hang with the niggas on yeah. the songs. Like you ain't <laughs> got to worry about. You know what I'm saying. 
Like I would have said sexy red, but I don't really like the message she promoting. So yeah. I don't really, you know. Yeah, she a big glowing. She glowed up a little bit too, and she got little yeah. titties out there. Shit. <laughs> they were saying that they was just talking about that on 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 the blogs the other day. Like, oh, now nah, she's trying to become a sex icon and shit like yeah. that. But shit, that's the that's the game, bro. They sex sell, so they yeah. gonna do all that shit. But I feel like her music ain't really switch up too much. No, no, not at all, not at all. I hope she's you know stick on this path and shit, dog. And you know, Gotti and uh and Ross, you know. Ross had kind of lost some people, but guy kind of took over that that shit. Like he, he, he seemed like he a nigga who like trying to build a label up the right way. You got a lot of artists that like get these, get these labels, but don't do shit with it. They just be like, I got this label, but it ain't got no representation. Like you see, like guy he doing the shit the right way and shit. Like I fuck with his whole movement and shit, dog. Yeah, his artists were moving right now. Mm -hmm. um, Ross, none of them artists really. I mean, they had their time. At the, yeah, MMG, the time. they had a time, but they kind of like they older now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I don't feel like Ross really reaching out to like new talent, trying to build the rebuild the team. Mm -hmm. If he was, he would have rinsed and repeated, and it would be like a new generator, yeah. new generation of artists he's pushing. But yeah. I don't really think it is. I I don't know. I could be wrong, but I don't think he signed any new artists. Nah, nah you know, because like I said, that Meek Mill, Stally, uh, Wale. And then you had uh, triple, what was it, triple G's or whatever like that. Like after that, it was kind of like rap and shit, though. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then you know, while they went his own way, Meat Mill, you know, doing his own thing and shit, though. So, but yeah, CMG, they they doing their shit though, for real. Uh, what's your definition of success, man? What do success look like for you at the end of the day? Um, being happy and just being able to um to live life the way you want to live it. Mm -hmm. If you could wake up every morning and and, and do whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. Then you're successful. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Anything you want to start new that you haven't tapped into, you do a lot. Then you do everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything new that you want to get, you know, what I'm saying tap into. Shit, like, I, I don't know. I do. I be doing like, you know, I be doing like the junk cards. So if you, you know, if y'all got junk cards, hit me up. Yeah. But like, you feel me? I do. I want to get into real estate. Mm -hmm. I want to um like the Toro shit, mm -hmm. Airbnbs. Like, I really just want to like build an empire. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And just so I can have a bag to put back in the music, cause it, one day I do want to be able to sign an artist and just give them like you know seven hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And really push them. So to get to that level, I know it's gonna take, it's gonna take some money. So mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that's really I wanted to start building you, the brand more businesses up. For sure, for sure, for sure. You, like I say, you, are you trying to get your own artists and stuff like that? As far as like a label started yourself? Yeah, I'll I be working with artists like I like kind of manage them, but I don't really sign nobody because. I feel like I want to be able to have something more to offer them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, it's really, I haven't really figured out the whole mindset of artists yet because they kind of, like, it be throwing me off sometimes. Yeah. Because, uh, like, one little thing in their life go wrong, then they just want to quit. And, like, I, I I feel like if you really doing this shit, you can't quit. Yeah. That's like you you mad so you quit your job one day. Like, you're not going to do that. <laughs> Hell yeah. So why For are you sure. saying, oh, I need a break from music, that type shit? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of people do that, and it could be just throwing me off. Yeah. What's a... Uh Define your life right now. What's a song or or album? If I press play, it's gonna tell me about GMT. Oh um, shit! Uh, Nipsey Hussle. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Hell Victory yeah. Victory lap, bro. Like I played that shit. Like when I'm on the road, I yeah. dash, or when I'm going to handles, like I play that shit, and it kind of yeah, yeah, it kind of get me in my mindset. Okay, and what what's the album that changed your life? Like for me, it was 400 Degrees. Cause prior to that, I was listening to like childish bullshit rap. It was like 400 Degrees really, like, once I heard that album, I'm like, dog, this shit, nigga, is amazing. Like, then it made me want to study the game and start listening to, you know saying, other rappers and shit, especially from, like, down south. Mm -hmm. What's um the blueprint? What is it? Before, what was it? Uh, New York? Um, New York? Oh, yeah, it was uh, Blue. I think that was Blueprint 3. 3. Yeah. When I, I was going to Wayne State, and that shit dropped. Yeah. And that kind of, like, I think that was, like, the first, like, seed that, like, like peak my interest in music like mm -hmm. damn this because the album was so put together and yeah. so well done like and i was playing that's like when i first like that's like really one of the first albums that i listened to from front to back over mm -hmm. and over and over again mm -hmm. i'm like oh this is a dope project for sure and Hell that kind of yeah, yeah kind of got me so i feel like that changed my life a little bit who who's the logo of detroit though like the nba logo is jerry west and everybody say it should be wish it should be changed to then he died now so it's gonna be hard but <laughs> i say the logo should be michael jordan if Detroit had a rap logo, who would be, who would that be for you, dog? For me or for like what? I, I don't know because it changes so much. Like the face of Detroit changes every time there's a new popping artist. But like I, if people say Detroit, they probably thinking like T Grizzly or something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, T you, Grizzly. You feel like he the one who kind of like 
changed up because before, you know, people wasn't running to Detroit to, uh, you know, saying fuck with the rappers in Detroit when it was the Blaze, it was the Big Hurts, it was the he definitely KDZ. bro when he dropped. His song definitely inspired the masses mm -hmm. and made niggas think that we could really do this rap shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because before that, it was like you had like the artist that was blowing up, but he was just like one of the regular niggas. Just, just blew <laughs> yeah, up. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. He was no bad pack nigga, no yeah, white boy. Yeah, yeah, just, and that shit took you off. Got, it wasn't a little bit of credit too uh, around that time, Dej Loaf. Because niggas say that, you know what I'm saying, Dirt kind of stole her style. I don't think he stole her style. You know what I'm saying? It was dating and shit for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, I ain't gonna say that, but it's just word in the streets. Don't don't come to me. Though. Is that her <laughs> what is that her style? With as far as what what uh the nigga saying dirt stole? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. She was the first person doing that? <laughs> I mean I mean Probably not. I don't think that's a wrestler style. Yeah. I mean, so it was other artists doing that shit. But Days Love, you know, she she was one of those ones who kind of like started, you know, popping off when this Detroit was turning as far as like niggas fucking with us too. Cause she well, that uh that that what's that try me that shit came out right right before T Grizzly and niggas, you know, what I'm saying kind of people us a little bit. I give Days Love a little credit too. Who did she put on? All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just no, asking a question. She ain't put nobody on. Cause like I don't know, cause I feel like you know like T Grizzly just said Jr. Name and that nigga got yeah. a whole career. <laughs> yeah, you feel yeah, me? He, he made he made so much no, money, but sure. T Grizzly did. just said Jr. You yeah. feel me? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. That's like, and then you feel me, Lee All Star, all these niggas. You yeah. feel me? Like he, yeah. They not they probably not like big rich, but they got but, a career to where they exactly. can take care of their family. Some money you know shit. what I'm saying? I see what you talking about. Yeah, you right. Now it got me thinking. I'm gonna have to write that down. I'll start thinking about niggas who really like paving the way for niggas behind them. Pause. Yeah, cause <laughs> no, cause like he he and even now he just did a song with T Grizzly, I mean he just did a song with, with Chris Brown, yeah. but he's still doing songs with with Skiller Baby, with he's still Doug, doing songs, song yeah, with, with people yeah. in the city. So I, I feel like he one of the artists that that's working and mm -hmm. giving back to the city type yeah. shit. I respect that. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. I gotta break that shit down. Really, like the niggas who are really helping the city, and not just talking shit. Cause you people, got, yeah, people want that that right to be the greatest. I feel like to be the greatest, you gotta like build. Yeah. You gotta turn people up yeah if you made some millionaires or you made some mm -hmm. then you and that's why i don't see why niggas you know the eminem argument could be had at all times but he helped out the niggas he was supposed to help out who he, eminem? D, d12 uh what's my name ob trice like he helped some niggas out that had opportunities to help other people out because like right now proof son is blowing up you know what I'm saying popping off and shit you know what I'm saying proof come from eminem I, I believe he did what he needed to do it didn't make sense for eminem to Come back and do a song with the new niggas because it's, it's gonna sound weird. I I think he did what he what he what he, he could did shit. He put us on he put us out there a little bit and he helped some niggas that's from Detroit. It was his niggas, but he helped them out. He didn't have to do that shit at all. I don't I don't feel like he was supposed to come back and help nobody out. Yeah. I mean, the I just when we, I feel like as a kid everybody listens to Eminem at some time, but when you like he's just not an artist that mm -hmm. our communities listen to exactly yeah. that's like the only thing like i feel like you know what i'm saying so that's why i never still like oh he got he ain't do enough he ain't like nigga no, like, like i put him in the same category as like kid rock yeah like you don't expect kid rock to come in the hood and work with nobody <laughs> yeah not for sure that nigga racist nah shit that nigga was all talking to Detroit shit. <laughs> that nigga became a fucking <laughs> Clan member and shit like dog. What the fuck happened to Kid Rock, dog? I thought he was fucking with Detroit, but as soon as he got on, he just like started switching. That's up what shit. it is, bro. Yeah, man. They gotta they gotta hide their true intentions until they um they make it on. That's why I fuck with Trump though. Yeah, because he he gonna tell you he don't like you. You feel <laughs> me? But <laughs> he gonna keep it real high. Yeah, he gonna hide that nigga racism and shit. Dog. <laughs> uh, I got this one shit. We can end it off like this, dog. Too early, too late, or right on time. Figuring out life. Did you figure out life too early, too late, or right on time? Uh, I still I feel like I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. Every day, bro, I learn something new every day. So, um To be continued. To be continued, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Facts. All right, moving out your parents' house. Too early, too late, or right on time. Too early, bro. I left my mom career when I was like sixteen, seventeen. Oh yeah. You... I feel like I should have stayed there until I was like twenty eight. Hell yeah, no, for sure. Oh. But I just talked to uh some guys on before, like and they culture like nigga, their parents don't let them leave yeah, until they don't let them leave. Yeah. yeah. Yep. First relationship was that shit too early, too late, or right on time? Um, I say right on time for my kids, but it was too early because I was still growing up. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I right, was well, speaking of kids and sex. Was that too early, too late, or right on time? Um, probably too early. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's another conversation. <laughs> 
<laughs> First job was that too early, too late, or right on time? Uh, shit. Probably right on time. He taught me how to get money early. All right, get into the music game. You feel like you did your purpose was too late, too early, or right on time. Right on time. Put out your first album, your first project. Too early, too late, or right on time. Right on time. I feel like like all of that yeah. is like is everything because like shit be happening sometimes that be so crazy to me. And I'd be like, if this would have happened yesterday, it yeah. wouldn't have played out the same way it needed Duh. to. That's why when niggas say, if I knew, I knew now. Nah. Yeah. Like sometimes, nigga, you just nigga. Yeah, it was shit, supposed to happen. Yeah, when it was supposed to happen. If I, if you had this money at this age, or you knew this at this age, you probably would have fucked some shit up. Definitely, you know what I'm saying. So like, that's why I say when niggas be like, I wish I could change some shit. Like, if you change one little small little thing, it's gonna fuck up the whole outcome of your life. Like everything, you know what I'm saying? Like so, you go back in the past and step on a butterfly, bro. Yeah, like, the yeah. world might be over. <laughs> oh yeah, you you say, hey, I, you need that 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 that, uh, that weak ass chick. <laughs> now you got yep. you a good wife because that weak ass yep. relationship you was in. Nigga, like shit, no, you facts. be needing these motherfuckers in your in your book and shit, dog. No facts. As long as you ain't die from the shit, you good to go, dog. <laughs> <laughs> anything you want to leave people with, dog? Motivational wise, like anything niggas should follow and shit, dog. The GMT way. Um, get money for sure. Yeah. By any means, nothing illegal. <laughs> yeah, for um, sure. Ladies, don't sell your body. Yeah. Um, and if you really want to be an artist, a rapper, mm -hmm. shit. You gotta live this shit. For sure. You gotta wake up every day. And the same way you gotta go to work to pay your bills, you gotta pay your dreams. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're gonna do that is if you put that work in. For sure, for mm -hmm. sure. Last question I wanna ask you, dog. I, I said that probably about four times already, but you got a daughter. I got a daughter that's three years old. I'm already thinking about shit when she's 33 years old. Like, yeah. I'm thinking about the whole ass niggas out here, the shit that she gonna be faced with. Now you gotta worry about these studs. Now yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta worry about studs and niggas and shit. Nah. So, like, are you like thinking about shit with your with your young daughter? Like, how you gonna, you know, saying basically give her the game, let her know what to look for and shit like that? Cause, like, it's hard raising a daughter, bro, in opposed to raising a son. I gotta, get her, I gotta give her the game. And most importantly, I feel like I just gotta be in her life. Yeah. You yeah. feel me? Because a lot of females that I ran into that had issues, they didn't have a dad that they can just call mm -hmm. and talk to. Facts. Or, you know what I'm saying? That's what they was missing, and they looking for that shit and other niggas, and they got them all fucked up. Hell yeah. Man, I appreciate you coming to this motherfucker, No dog. problem, man. Dope you know, interview, dog. For sure. Appreciate and, uh, you having me here, I'm, man. And like I said, don't feel like you were just a replaced nigga, dog. You was, you was <laughs> next on the list, so when the nigga spent me, I'm like, let me go ahead, go to the person who supposed to came the week after and shit, dog. So no, it's cool, though. I appreciate it. It was the timing, bro. Like I said, everything's right on time. Yeah, because you know like I saying? said, I hit dog up last night, 1130 and shit, dog. Like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> is it too early to ask you come on Stoker <laughs> you know what I'm saying so like I said I appreciate you reaching out dog you seen some shit dog like, you know I like I like when people reach out to me and opposed to me having to reach out to people yeah no, cause I'm shit. trying to I'm really like I feel like people know the brand but they don't really know who I am mm -hmm. so like this year and like next year I'm just trying to get my face out there and get you feel me just let people know that it's somebody yeah. behind GMT <laughs> Entertainment it's For not sure. just a hundred people in a you feel me yeah. a machine or something hell yeah man but shit man y'all already know what it is man shout out to everybody episode 206 GMT in the building man you know what yes, it is sir. best podcast in the city if you think different then man fuck you cuz <laughs> we got this motherfucker man right. shout out to Cuba behind the boards and make sure y'all subscribe to this shit don't watch this motherfucker shit and don't subscribe man it's easy tap that motherfucker button oh yeah definitely and then subscribe stay locked in with up and coming rappers producers motherfucking actors hoopers whatever dog don't go to the other motherfuckers come to here yes sir <laughs>